Hey there YouTube, long time no see and it feels great to be back at it again. Now, what am I doing with this Cadillac? Well, I'm gonna start touring Cadillacs now. Um, I posted some updates on my Facebook fan page about the transition from Toyota to Cadillac, so <sighs> feels good reviewing cars that I may actually start enjoying. No offense, Toyota. You've only impressed me with those reusable handbags I fetch at the auto show. Anyways, we have this 2014 Cadillac ATS. The trim level to this ATS is called Luxury, so it's mid-range for the most part. There's uh, higher trim levels, actually. This one is all-wheel drive, has the 2.0-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, makes 272 horsepower, and packs 260 foot-pounds of torque, so it's more than enough power to move this 3,500-pound sedan. Now, rear-wheel drive is the standard configuration for the ATS and there's a huge weight reduction too. Drops down to about 3,300 pounds so that's light for this little car. Makes it extremely nimble when you start tossing it around in corners and whatnot. Now I spent the last hour driving around this ATS. I am extremely impressed with this 2 liter turbocharged engine. Now there is an optional V6 engine, a 3.6 liter in fact. Delivers just north of 300 horsepower and has 272 foot-pounds of torque. Not much more more than this four-cylinder here. There's the entry two and a half liter four-cylinder engine. It's normally aspirated and it has about 200 horsepower. It's just north or south of that figure. And that drops the price to the ATS into the lower $30,000 range. Uh, this one with all its options is north of 40,000. I'll show you the window sticker in a moment. Did I just say winder? I meant window, actually. <laughs> Any automotive enthusiast who puts themselves behind the wheel of an ATS, compare it to a European rival, such as the BMW 3 Series or even the Mercedes C-Class. Um, it's just that good, and it's amazing how GM was able to manage doing that. Cadillac has changed so much in the past 5-10 years. Enough about the history, Let's just to get a load of the looks of this car. So Cadillac and American. Love the big grill. Gives an authoritative look. The headlights sweeping above the fenders. It actually grew on me um, now that I've spent more time with the car. In the beginning, I was a little bit nervous about it. Just reminded me of the Aztec, but this is totally different. It does add a commanding look to the car. The back as well looks great. Love the dual exhaust tips towards the center. And it's amazing how Cadillac is able to pull off their trademark look. The tall, squared off shoulders and back. They've been doing that for decades, and it still looks great, only with a more modern touch. LED tail lights, and just get a look at that sparkly paint finish. I love it. Um, the brake light strip above, also LEDs, just looks great here. These 17 inch polished aluminum wheels. This car is equipped with a Brembo brake package only in the front, so it should have some good stopping power. Now, I will miss out talking about many of the features of this car, so let me just run you down the window sticker. It's just a long list of features here. And get a load of that sticker price. Totals out to $44,665. You can no longer consider Cadillac the bargain. It's really at the same price point as Mercedes C-Class or uh, the BMW 3 Series. Now again, the color, black diamond tri-coat, and the Morello red interior. Um, it's a gorgeous interior you're going to see in a moment. Look at the key fob. Love how the sun just gleaves off the logo and the wreath right there. Car locks, unlocks, remote start, panic, and push for trunk. This trunk is decent enough, and please excuse all the wrappers. This car is brand spanking new. 60-40 split fold. Uh, those backrests will tumble down. The owner's manual and the floor mats are still in the wrappers right there. I like how the hinges are concealed, not in the way, and won't intrude with cargo. And I don't believe this car has a spare tire, but an air compressor. This car is equipped with run flats. These hooks in case you want to strap down anything. And what will we find in here? Oh, there's the battery. Packed in the trunk, just like BMWs. And you can see the eye for the backup camera, and it's a button over here to pop up the trunk. Now, get a load at this beautiful red interior. I love this combo. It's an eight-way powered seat. Get all the thigh support you want, backrest, and this is for lumbar support. Love the perforated texture of this leather. 
and the stitching over here really looks nice. Doesn't look cheap or inexpensive at all. Very well done. The materials on the door panel are excellent. Everything is soft to the touch. And usually I'm a critic when it comes to the carbon fiber look, but it looks amazing and it does have a little bit of a red texture inside of it. Goes well with this interior. Everything here is padded, armrest as well, even within the door pocket. Just this section here is plasticky, but oh well, at least the inside is padded. There's the button to uh, unlatch the trunk. And notice the Bose badge right there on the door speaker, memory seating, up to two settings, door locks, power mirrors, all four windows have auto down functions. Now only the two front windows have auto up and window lock, the backup sensors, and the panel dim functions. Whole surface here is padded. All right, so let's get this car started up. Push button start. You'll see the gauge sweep. get a load of this interior. It just feels right in here, and this is so rare for me to say because I've been pretty harsh with Cadillacs in the past, but this is the, one of the first Cadillacs that uh, I actually love being in. Oh, this interior just feels great. Lots of attention to detail everywhere. Nicely done, Cadillac. Looking at these earthy color seats, Cadillac calls it Morello Red. Um, it really does look great, and it's likely the color I would have if I were to ever go for an ATS. Uh, the seats are very supportive. Love the perforated inserts here. It's the same deal on the backrest. Backrest itself is very supportive, and the headrest does pop forward too. You can see how that happened once you push the button. This isn't a massive car, but I don't feel squished in here. Um, there is sufficient thigh support. The footwell is somewhat on the narrow side, but it's not bad. It's still tolerable, and there's sufficient shoulder room. I mean, my shoulders aren't cramming against the pillar right here, and that's amazing considering the size of this car. The choice of materials throughout this interior is just excellent. Um, the entire dashboard is padded, has this leathery look to it. You can see the stitch on the dashboard. The carbon fiber that runs along onto the door panels, everything here is padded. Even the lid to the glove box is padded. Open it up and it's pretty large. This is where the CD player would have gone. This one doesn't come with that. Dual latches so uh, the lid shouldn't jiggle around if you went over any bumps. And it is damped of course. You can see how it slowly drops open. Very easy. Here is the infotainment screen here. It's eight inches large, and the system is called Q. I'm not going to base my opinions on what everyone else says. I'm going to go by uh, what I've experienced right now, and this is my first time using it. What I do notice, it can be laggy. I do love this colorful, sharp, and bright display. Everything just looks great on it. Um, this car does have HD radio, Bluetooth, USB, aux jack input, just about everything you'd want, but it doesn't have Navi. Now, when you touch something, you can see it sort of takes a while for it to think about it. You can see the dual zone automatic climate control right here. I just love how sharp and colorful this is. I'm sorry if I'm saying that again. Um, our compass, that should move around once I'm driving the car. You can pair your phone to it. There's nothing to pair right now. and. Going back to uh, the radio, but let me keep the clapping control going again. Change the direction of the airflow. You have your clock to the corner over here and the uh, outdoor thermometer. Now this entire surface is touch sensitive. You do not touch the bars, but the black surface itself. Now it does have like a tactile feel to it. There's actually like some sort of motor or something within it that vibrates very briefly. Just to give you the sense that you're actually pushing a button you can sort of hear it like a thud sound. But other than that, I really don't consider this to be a bad infotainment system at all. It just looks so easy to use. Um, let's go into settings, see what this is about. You can see how it sort of takes a little while for things to start scrolling up and down. Again, this really isn't a bad system at all. If anything, the only improvement it could ever use is just a little bit more horsepower just so that the entire system would have more fluidity to it. I would be fine living with this. You can see this fan going up and down. You just tap away. It's very responsive in this case. Um, this is for the heated seats. You just touch for it to get going. You can hear the input sounds, the thud noises that I'm talking about. Now, this entire thing flips open. Just touch over over here, flips open like so, and you'll meet your USB port. Now, when you want this thing to go down, just give it a light tap up here and the thing will close back up. I am a little bit scared of that thing breaking. Who knows how long that can last because electronics break eventually. 
this is the area that is most heavily criticized about the ATS, and it's just how glossy everything is over here. Personally, I'm not into the glossy look myself. It's just a dirt and dust magnet, along with fingerprints as well. I mean, I've already left my identity all over this thing, so unfortunate, but I do not consider it a deal breaker. It does look good to an extent. Um, we have another power outlet down there along with this little cubby. Close that back down. That glossy look surrounds the shifter over here. Uh, this car is equipped with a six-speed automatic. I forgot to mention that earlier. Up and down shift. Uh, this is to change the mode of the transmission and possibly the throttle response too. There's a sport, touring, and snow ice mode. Now as I push it, you can see how I can fluctuate those settings. Uh, let's leave it in sport mode. That's how I would prefer it to. The car just acts more lively. This is the stability and traction control. Now going back to the shifter, I do love the feel of it. It doesn't feel large or clunky, and it's surrounded with leather around it. It doesn't feel plastic or cheap at all. Sides of the center console, everything is padded. Love the stitching that runs throughout it. Going in here, we have the dual cup holders. The lid to the center console opens up, of course, nicely padded and plush, so your elbow should never be tired on it. Um, there's a button here in the front. That's how you open it up. And yeah, there's a decent amount of storage in there. You'll find two more USB ports, the aux jack, and a media card reader. So there's lots of connectivity within this car. Um, nobody should ever complain here. And the center console itself is sure-footed. doesn't jiggle around at all. This interior is just well done. The steering wheel is very thick, has side bolsterings, and it's actually heated too. The hands-free controls, cruise control, and there's the on and off button for the heated steering wheel function. Moving over to the right, volume controls, and this is your navigation navigation button. You can fluctuate that other LCD display within the instrument cluster. You can even get a digital readout of your speed. It's really an extension to the Q system. Now you can see how I'm just moving it away up and down that way. That's how you get things working here. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes. It's damped. The headliner's plush. Could have been thicker, but it's not bad. Handles are damped. The sun visor is padded sufficiently. Vanity light and mirror slides out so that uh, you can block off more sunlight. The Homelink garage door opener is essentially a universal garage door opener. Here are the controls for the sunroof. If you want to tilt it, slide it open like so. That's enough of that. Map lights, the OnStar functions, and these are the on and off switches for the interior lightings. Now this rear view mirror is pretty interesting. It's almost bezel free and it does dim. Check out the back seat. Materials on the door panel are identical as up front, nothing different. And just look at this back seat. Rear seat legroom isn't that good. It wouldn't be a problem if the front passengers are short. Briefly mention that all the other competitors in this class don't have a roomy back seat either. But uh, let me just step inside. Um, yeah, it's just useless and I'm not comfortable at all. And it's quite a shame too because the bottom section of the seat isn't bad itself. It's really the legroom right now which is a problem and I had the seat set forward a bit more than I would have wished. We have these AC vents behind the center console. Another little tray and power outlets. And let's flip down this armrest which I think ought to be damped. You can see how it just drops down or they just forgot to put the little spring to tension up the armrest. The dual cup holders right there and some more storage space. Trunk access. Let's get out of here. It's a little bit of a struggle. Again, this isn't the place for an adult of over six feet in height. Ooh. Now let's just drop down this side of the backrest because I have the tag pinched on that side. Just pull on this latch over here and the backrest should tumble down like so, but I need to move the front seat forward a little bit so that the backrest tumbles down completely. Quick look in the passenger side, self-explanatory, same power seat controls here. A 2.0 liter, dual overhead cam, four cylinder, it's turbocharged, variable valve timing, and direct injection, which explains that chattery noise. It's supposed to do that. It could be easy to work on, too. I mean, look, just look at all this space here. And you can see the turbo is right down there. I'm not going to touch it. I'm sure that thing is scorching hot. It's 
pretty rev happy engine. And I like how uh, the exhaust has a poppy noise to it, very burbly. Now, the thing I need to remember about this car is just the large amount of torque it has. Really, this little two liter engine can surprise you. I love it! Just pulling into traffic, you don't have to fear anything. I mean, you take more risks because you know you have the power. Uh, I need to stop thinking that I'm driving my Volvo. Um, that car is pretty slow, no offense. I love it, but yeah, I need to upgrade. In terms of power, this engine is just golden. I love it. For the time being, I don't see the need for the V6, but I'm still curious to see how that one works. Forgive me for being harsh, um, I can only imagine the normally aspirated 2.5 liter motor to be awful. Um, who knows, I could be surprised. I do intend on making a tour of that car too, though I will not go in depth with it. I just want to give you uh, mostly a test drive of that car just to give my impressions of that motor. And also the V6. Uh, the V6 is more powerful than this. More horsepower, not a huge torque difference. But, uh, yeah, it will be fun to give you all a comparison. Now we intend to go into the freeway in a moment. <laughs> Sorry, Highlander, but uh, I'm not going to let you go in front of me. power of this thing, it really does surprise you. bumps, but it's actually not bad. These, this car does an excellent job absorbing bumps. Now, that surprised me earlier. We do have the 17-inch alloy wheels to thank for that. Uh, there are 19-inch wheels, but I've been told that the ride is a little bit harsh. Right now I'm going 60. Let's see how quick it will uh, take for this thing to hit 80. That's 80. Loved it. This thing is a rocket. This car has so much composure. It's very stable, doesn't wallow around. Back then, you associate Cadillac with a soft, plushy, disconnected ride, basically a rolling barge. It's really not the case anymore. This is a driver's car. The Toyotas that I test drove, if you guys remember them all, None of them put a smile on my face like this car. Just makes me giggle somewhat, and it's only from a little two-liter engine. It's amazing. This is the first Cadillac I wouldn't mind owning. Now I just can't wait to see how the CTS drive. It's supposed to be better than this, or so I've heard. All right, going back to the German rivals. Briefly, I had some behind the wheel time of an E90. 3 Series BMW, just had the normally aspirated inline 6, that Bieber just had such a harsh ride. This, such a huge difference, yet still has a composed ride. I have no idea what to expect from the current generation, I believe it's called F30, so hopefully I'll have an opportunity to drive one of those. Crestmont Cadillac has a huge pre-owned department, so I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if a BMW ever happened to pop up, or even a Mercedes. Time to go around the roundabout. The engine does sound weird, flattery, kind of like a generator, but once you wind it up, it does sound great, though. I'm already at 35. Jeez, this car flies. <laughs> I'm actually having fun with this car. It's just so grounded to the ground. I dare you all to guess where I heard that. This thing handles like a European car, and I love it. And it's American. Of Cadillac. It's unbelievable. Listen to that turbo. You heard the whine to it? 
Now, as I've said countless times, the rivals to this car are BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes C-Class. This car is a contender, and if you're shopping around for something of the class of those cars, give the ATS a look. It really will surprise you, and who knows, you probably may end up buying one. That's just how good this car is. It truly isn't a bad thing to own a Cadillac anymore. It really isn't. And it doesn't cease to amaze me how they've been able to bring life into this brand. Cadillac is the alternative, and it's equally priced to the German rivals. So when it comes down to picking any of the three, it can be difficult. You can end up liking all three and not know which one to choose. Now, if you happen to be in the Cleveland area and you're in the market for a new Cadillac, come on down to Crestmont Cadillac in Beachwood, Ohio, and talk to James Hecker. He can hook you up with a new Cadillac or pre-owned vehicle. Crestmont Cadillac is in the top 20 best performing Cadillac dealerships in the country and number one in the state of Ohio. Let's not forget that. Along with the best selection of cars. If you want to contact James, his information is within the annotations that are popping up and in the video description down below the video. So anyways, YouTube, thanks for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed this tour.